Hello, everyone. Face of here, and welcome to episode uh, session four and a half of quarantine. Um, we got uh, we got Trindum here playing Rokax. Uh, he's missed the last couple sessions because of various family issues and stuff. Issues. It's definitely not an issue. Baby, new baby. Um, and so we are going to be doing a quick one on one right now to explain what his character was doing while the rest of the team was doing what they were doing. Uh, he doesn't know what the rest of the team was doing, so uh, to keep player knowledge and character knowledge separate, which is pretty cool. And uh, I'm kind of excited. I want to see what exactly happened here. We're going to find out a little bit more about Rokax. Looks like Cereal's here. Salad is here. Or Sabrina is here. How's it going, my friends? Welcome to the stream. And Birch. Wow, we got a bunch of friends in already. I'm heckin' excited. I hope you guys are too. Um, hopefully, you've got some pretty cool stuff planned out here. And uh, let me unmute. And uh, Trindum, you should be good to go. How's it going, my dude? Oh, pretty good. Excited to play. Uh, been been a few weeks for sure. So just a couple. Um, yeah. So we're gonna avoid anything that happened with the, uh, the rest of the team, uh, just because that makes sense. And and essentially, what happened? Uh, Rokax decided uh, he wanted to go talk to his tribe um, to see if he could find out some information as to what the heck happened to Aldaria. And uh, that's kind of what we're gonna be playing out today. Um, let's see. Um, did I forget anything? No. Uh, we did level him up to level three because that's uh, what happened uh, with the rest of the team after they fought that owl bear that uh, was great fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I almost, I almost got <laughs> tore up on that one. Yeah, me and you pucker your butt butthole a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Just like, ooh, ooh, the, the, death, the death thing is real. He wasn't kidding. <laughs> So, uh, um, let's see. Uh, Fragger's here. All right. I love that you guys are all here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate the support. Um, I will occasionally say, like, message back, but we're playing game here. I'm sure you guys all remember and know how this works. So, we're going to be getting into this. Anyways, let's see. How are we going to start this? Um, Rokax, you were waiting for, uh, originally waiting for that merchant to come in because he had uh, possibly some information that you guys were looking for, uh, but he didn't show up in time for uh, uh, you to converse with him. So you decided to split, say, I'm going to go talk to my tribal elders to see if they have any information as to what the heck is happening. And uh, we're going to say uh, you're traveling. You're able to travel fairly well due to your uh, Goliath heritage. Your uh, endurance and stuff is a little bit higher, we're going to say, and uh, you're able to G gain many miles uh, on your days of travel and uh, you're going to be going up to the mountains uh, where you're from and uh, into the tundra where there's a bunch of snow and so, hey you um, let's let's turn on some uh, ambience because we need some ambience what would you call that uh, definitely not a cave how come I have no mountain stuff come on Got no mountain stuff. Wilds? Should have had this all ready to go. Oh, here you go. Foraging of the mountains. Let's play with this. That sounds fun. Um, let's... Sure, that's mountainy. I don't know. Um, you're just going on some, uh, quick travels. Um, you make about 18 miles progress, which is massive. Sounds a little crazy. Um, and you decide to, uh, settle in for the night you start up yourself a nice campfire uh to settle in and uh kind of just reflect on what the heck recently has happened um anything in particular that may cross your mind uh what do you mean like so uh you're done setting up camp you're about to turn in for the night uh you're just watching the fl flames flicker and stuff before you do you are you thinking about anything in particular about like, uh, what has transpired, uh, the people you've met, anything significant thinking, or are you just kind of relaxing? No, I, uh, I, uh, Ro Rokex is pretty uh, um, single-minded guy. He's, uh, he's, not, he's not really uh, excited to have to go back to town and, but, uh, or back to his, back to his, uh, tribe because he, he left he did leave there with uh you know uh with shame 
um, with some personal shame, but he, uh, you know, he's not looking forward to going back. That's the simple of, of, of it, but he's just kind of trying to stay focused because he knows that, uh, he knows that something um, big has happened and it's worth it to him to, to go back to see if he could get some insight as to, as to you know, how he could help. Okay. So, other than that, he's just uh, just trying to stay focused on uh, what his what his mission is and what what he feels he needs to do to to uh, figure out the problem. Okay. Um, as you're kind of just thinking to yourself of what is to come, uh, you've just been staring at the the flames here for a little bit, kind of flicker and. Just watching the, the embers and the flames dance, your eyes lids slowly get heavy, and uh, you drift into a sleep. And uh, you are assaulted by uh, some visions and uh, nightmares of uh, your past that is haunting you, and uh, the reason why you left your tribe. And yet, in the idea that um, you, it's a frequently reoccurring nightmare that you have is. Uh, you're uh, up on the, the mountainside and you're battling this this monster that is probably far blown out of proportion to what it actually is now uh, since you were younger. Um, but you are there with one of uh, your best friend and uh, you are startled awake with sweat dripping down your face as uh, your friend screams at you in your dream but his voice is silent he you can tell he mouths your old name and it jolts you awake um we don't we haven't come up with uh your original name yet but uh you kind of shake it off it's about four in the morning now you do have a long uh trips ahead of you and uh, you uh, you continue to move forward. Yes. Um, How do you feel about that? Yeah. What do you mean move forward? You mean getting up? Yeah. So yeah. I'm 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 startled awake. Yeah. I I, I feel like that was. Um, I can see a little bit, right? I mean, it's. Or is it too early to start seeing, or am I just gonna start packing up camp? Yeah, it's like four in the morning. The, the sun's coming up. Um, I thought about doing it an encounter. But I, I don't know how fun that would be. Um, but yeah, you are you are jolted awake. You know, hearts okay. pounding. Yeah, there's so there's no going back to sleep. I'll go ahead and put the put the fire up and break camp, or put the fire out and break camp and uh, and move on. Yeah. Okay. Um, you decide to uh, you you move at a little bit of brisker pace because you just want to get this over with. Um, you start crossing into the borderlands of uh, your tribal area. Uh, you're starting to get into the snow and stuff. Um, it's starting to get cooler and uh, a little bit of sense of ease washes over you because you're walking, you're returning to your homeland even though you're a little at ill at ease because of the reason you're returning. But it's from where you're from. There's a little bit of a calm there and fresh packed snow everywhere. Uh, deafens the sounds and stuff around you. Uh, we'll say after a, about a half day's journey, uh, you see your tribal area on the side of a mountain face and you're walking up next. Or you, you can see it in the distance and you'll be there within about 20 minutes walk. As you start to... Okay, okay go ahead. Oh no, that's... Uh... You good? No, that's good. I'll, uh, I was just saying okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep moving forward. All right. As you, uh, start to, uh, approach, get closer to the tribe. Do I have a cloak? Uh, sure. Do you, do you want it? Do you need, want a cloak? Do you want your character to I don't have know. a cloak? I don't, I don't have one on me. I don't have any sort of... Yeah. No, well, it's okay. I would no, assume that right. you could have some sort of cloak because you'd use that as like a blanket as you're traveling, right? Yeah. 
So yeah, if you want a cloak, yeah. you can have a cloak. It doesn't affect your stats in any way. So I would just want to. I would just want to try to be somewhat inconspicuous as I entered. Oh, okay. Um, because I do. I do have a goal to to visit the elders. Um, but I I'm not interested in. Um, you know, catching up with those from my past or anything like that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Uh, as uh, you start to, hey, as you start to uh, approach the area, it is in a wide open area with uh, snow. So any newcomer walking up is going to draw some attention of uh, some of the tribal members, and they're kind of wondering who the heck is walking up. They obviously know. You're probably a Goliath because of your size. You're not some 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 stranger, but um, they don't know quite know if you're someone that came is returning from a recent hunting party or not. But uh, off in the little bit of distance, you see a Goliath. Uh, he's busy uh, tending some stuff near a hut, uh, like the <laughs> his tanning of some uh, recent kills and uh, leather. Uh, he's kind of bent over and he's, you know, shucking the skin and stuff. And, uh, he kind of takes notice of you and he slowly stands up and he looks into your direction. And, uh, he's about a good head taller than you. And, uh, you're about 10 feet away from him now. And he comes over to you and you recognize it as your friend's older brother. And, uh, he recognizes you, and what would your reaction be to seeing him walk towards you? Uh, I, I think he would, uh, Rokax would, uh, stand tall and, and, uh, greet him, uh, greet him. Okay. Yeah. Um, not, not any sort of, like, uh, Real exciting way, but you know, sure, he would, uh, uh yeah, he would we, be friendly. Yeah, we just yeah, wanted to know your know uh, name. your reaction. His name is Rockerod. Rockerod, yeah. Uh, he he approaches you, and uh, the very ground underneath his feet seems to shake. He is he's one of the bigger Goliaths from your past. Um, he was understood to possibly be one of the, the greater warriors of the tribe. Although he's always had a very kind heart, um, is he's known as a uh, Earthbreaker, and uh, he comes over to you, and uh, he places his hand out in front of you in uh, a traditional shake, you know, grab each other's arms kind of thing, and he says, "It's been a while." All right, hold on, man. We need we need something interesting. It's been too long, my friend. What was his name again? Rocker Rod. Uh, hi, Rocker Rod. He says, uh, uh, so, uh, the Little Rock finally returns to the tribe. Little Rock um, was, uh, uh, your tribal nickname because, uh, you took um, after uh, him or, uh, your friend. Your friend was a little bigger, but you always rolled around with him. You were you weren't scared of anything. Uh, they would get into danger all the time, and even though you were the smaller of the ones, you always seemed to be have the most gumption. Yeah, um, I'd tell him. Uh, I'd say, yeah, uh, only for a short while. Uh, I have some business I need to take care of, and then I'll be off again. But it's great seeing you. Very well. Is there anything I could get you? Um, I might need a place to stay for uh for uh next day or so. Is uh, do you mind if I uh join you and your family? Not at all, my friend. I shall have a new bed set up. Mama. I shall I shall set up new bedding for you, as uh you can. Uh, looks like you're looking for Charsey. That, that's, uh, one of your elders' names. Charsey. Yeah. 
She's just up the hill. Yeah, I'm, uh... As you would normal. She's probably in her study. Uh, would you like an escort? Thank you. I think I can manage. Thank you. Very well. And uh, as before he uh, turns away to walk into his hut to make sure that your provisions are all set up, uh, another, a pair of Goliaths come up and uh, approach you and he's like, uh, let's see, we need a different kind of voice. Well, if it isn't Little Rock, return from the dead. He's a, he's a Goliath of a slightly shorter stature. He's about your height. Cover, he has a, he has permanent black, uh, I guess, ash around one of his eyes. And the other Goliath behind him is significantly shorter than him. Seems to be kind of his, uh, puppet pal that just kind of follows him wherever he goes. And, uh, he's obviously coming up to you because, uh, he doesn't acknowledge you as a member of the tribe since you left. Um, does he have a name? Uh, yeah. Uh, he'll be, uh, Swiftfoot. Or that's his nickname. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Dorag, or... Yeah, Dorag. How about that? Is his name. Um. I'm not... I'm not here to cause any trouble, Swiftfoot. If, uh... If I could just be on my way to see... How do you... How do you say her name? Sharsa? Sharsa. Yeah. Sharsa. Um... I'm here to see Sharsa, uh... And, and then I'll, uh... I'll be, uh... I'll be on my way. He says... Those that have... Or those that have abandoned their families have no business returning here. And he shoves you in the shoulder. Oh, bye. Um, I'll just, I'll just step back and, uh, he said, I, I say Swiftfoot, I'm not looking for a fight. Um, I have important, um, I have questions that needs to be answered by Charse. Um, if, uh, You know, I wouldn't be back here if, uh, if I didn't need to be. So if I can get my questions answered, I'll be on my way and, uh, you won't have to deal with my presence anymore. He snores. Uh, <laughs> he's such a coward, always fleeing from the responsibilities. And then, uh, crap, I forgot what his name, Roka Rod. Um, he actually hears the kind of commotion and he comes out and he says such big talk for, for one named Swiftfoot and uh you can see Swiftfoot's uh demeanor change at the sight of Earthbreaker coming out and uh he comes uh Rokarod comes and places his hand on your shoulder and he's like come brother pay them no mind <laughs> no we means nothing listening to a, one that is uh it's scared of the rabbits every now and then. <laughs> That's how he got his name. Is uh, he got spooked by uh, a snow rabbit once when they were little, and so he he, he kind of throws a tantrum. He's like, "What are you talking about, Earthblaker? You don't know what you're talking about." And then he's all embarrassed and shaken up. So he, he swiftly walks away with his counterpart, and, he's, and uh, the Rocker Rod eventually says, "Maybe I will join you up the mountain." Looks like a beautiful day. I could use the exercise. Come. And you walk Your up the mountain. Your company is welcome. Uh, okay. So uh, you're making your way up the mountain. And uh, about 50 feet outside of the main hub of the, uh, the tribal center is uh, a little cave that goes actually into the side of the mountain. And then is reserved for the tribal er elder. And uh, you remember... Sharsa being one of the older Goliaths, even by Goliath Sanders. Goliaths don't live as long as most people, uh, most races of medium size. Not because of a disposition of age or a problem. It's Goliaths choose to stay in their tribe as long as they feel like they pull their own weight. And so, as they get older, if they start feeling like they can't pull their own weight, the older ones will leave the tribe and let nature take them kind of thing. So 
Having an older, old Goliath is a sight to see. And from what you remember as a child, Charsa was already old. You start walking your way up to the side of the mountain, you see some various bones and feathers and stuff from animals in the tundra kind of hanging and uh, making bone noises. Bone noises, yes. In the wind. And uh, before you even reach the mouth of the cave opening, you uh, you hear us like, well, welcome back. Oh, that was a horrible voice. Hold on a minute. We need to fix that. It's like, uh, if it isn't Little Rock. She kind of, she's a hunched over old Goliath lady. She comes over with a, a big stick, walking stick, comes over to you. Big smile on her face, eyes full of wrinkles just from a lifetime of smiles. Woman, uh, very wise woman. And uh, she's very kind-hearted and willing to do what is best for the tribe. And uh, she's obviously very excited and happy to see you. My, have you grown? Is that for sure, you? Sir. It is, it is me. It's, it's great to see you. Um, I, uh, I witnessed some events that I, I don't quite understand and I think could be dangerous to us all. Um, and I'm hoping that, um, somehow you might give me some insight to, uh, um, how I can track down the source of, uh, of what I witnessed. She kind of looks at you, puzzled. It's like, "Why? Yes, I would love to help where I can." But you look famished. Please come and sit, eat, drink with Thank me. Thank you. Thank you. And then, uh, thank you. Uh, Rokarod, uh, pats you on the back of the shoulder and says, "I guess I'll, I will see you tonight, my friends. Hopefully, you find some wisdom that you seek." Thank you. Uh, Sharsa leads you into the, the cave entrance and says, So tell me about this. Isn't the stuff that you're looking for? So, um, after I left years ago, I've been, I've been traveling, um, and, uh, you know, doing what I can uh, out in the, out in the world, um, out, how would, what would you call that? Civilized people? I don't know. Hey, um, yeah. what, 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 what would they call the, uh, other people? I don't Normal, non-tribal people? The normies. Yeah, the, the normies. <laughs> uh. So, um, I've been, I've been, uh, you know, traveling civilization and I, I found my way to a, uh, a very large city, uh, called Aldaria. Are they familiar with Aldaria, or are we too far? Are they too far? I, I, w I would assume they would be too remote to, uh... Yeah, they don't know um, yeah. Uh, anything by that name. I found a, I found a very large, um, city. Um, lots of, lots of trade and lots of different, um, types of people, um, was going on here. And I was staying there for a while, and I was in and out, um, for a while. Um, but one day, all of a sudden, uh, everything, everything vanished. Uh, we were, we were there, or I was there, um, in this, uh, I'm gonna, I'll describe that thing that we saw, that big old spider-looking thing, or whatever it was. <laughs> um, I'll describe to her how everything turned to ash, or all the people turned to ash, and we had some, um, some people turn into those creatures. We fought them, um, and describe how I was one of only a few people that made it out or even remember the existence of this city. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll describe all of that, um and see if she has any insight there. She says, Hmm. That is bad. Whoa, what happened there? Uh, somehow, I'm weird freaked out. 
That is very peculiar, indeed. A disappearing city, you say? She's, uh, she's starting to mix up some, uh, some teas and herbs. And, uh, you can tell she's obviously thinking over things. As, uh, what you explain. She, she doesn't, uh, distrust you by any means, but, uh, she definitely has a look of worry upon her face. Uh, because it is, uh, so strange. She goes, So what do you think I could be able to help with you with this? Um, well, one, I would, uh, you know, with, uh, you being in tune with nature and the natural world, um, it seems unnatural to me, so I wouldn't know if you, uh, I was hoping you may have, uh, had some, uh, had noticed some, uh, other disturbing thing because something, something of, something that happens that I would imagine that something this large happening would have other outreaching effects um, throughout the rest of the world and um, I didn't know if you could commune with the spirits and get me some direction sure um, okay she uh, she thinks to herself and she's like how long ago did this happen again how long ago was that a couple of days ago? Uh, yeah, about a week. Something. A week ago? Okay. Yeah. It's like... Traveled for a day. And... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she, uh... She reaches over. As you say that, as she's reaching over to grab some more herbs, she you can see her hands visibly stop in contemplation, and then she reaches in, and she dusts them over the drink. And she says... A week ago. Hmm. She comes over to you with uh, this this drink. And uh, she sets it in front of you. On a... Or she, she hands it to you. And she walks by you and says, Come join me by the fire. Hey, hold, hold on one second, okay? You're good. Alright, we back. I'm recording. We're good. Uh, we left off. You're sitting down at the, um, the campfire. Uh, oh, she asked you about your, uh, your nightmares. Ah, uh, yes. Um, yes. Um, they've, they've plagued me for, they've plagued me for a while. Um, does she, does she know about them, or she just, she just senses that I'm having internal conflict? Hmm. Little column or do A, I not little know? column B. I will say that, okay. um, you know that she is far wiser than she leads on to be. Okay. But she lets so, people come to her and reveal what they wish. She may know more than you think. She's extremely wise. Sure, 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 sure. I gotcha. Um, but I, I'm, yeah. So I'm gonna, t I'm, I'm gonna tell her that, yeah, they, they've been, those have been plaguing me for a while. But that's, that's just uh, something I, they'll pass, and that's, that's something that I need to deal with on my own. Do you, basically. Tr do you truly gonna, believe it will pass? Um, eventually, uh, once I, uh, once I make up for it, it'll be gone. She kind of nods her head. Like, oh, crap. I, uh, broke things. Oh, well. Um, she says, Well, I do, I really do hope that uh, your nightmares do subside in the very near future. But you have to face your demons at some point. May I ask why you felt it was necessary to leave the tribe? Um... Because, uh... Uh, 
there's there, uh, there's uh I left to put my talents to a better use. Okay. Let's see. Um We haven't come up with your original name yet. So she's gonna She's gonna say your original name, and you can respond how you want. But uh, she she says, "Meh." <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do. We should, we should come up with a name. It's supposed it's supposed to be seven syllables, so I think it should be meh 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 well, meh 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 meh. The, the, the seven syllables <laughs> is, the, is the clan, right? The, the seven syllables is a clan. I have your clan name. Your clan name is Anak Grow Through Thai. Yeah, I not grow through Thai. That is it, your tribe. But uh, okay. Uh, how how do you feel with uh, Lokag for your original name? Yeah. Or, or Borgek. I like Lokag better. Cool. All right. Uh, she goes. Uh, you were you say, uh, you pro are providing different things like, she comes over and, uh, she she's a good deal shorter than you. But she takes up her hands, and she places them on your face, and says, Look, Lokag, you are running from things. You may think that you have picked up a different mantle. I can see inside you are filled with turmoil, and you are fleeing your past. She takes her hands down, and she turns around, and she goes back to the other side of the, the campfire, and she begin she starts to sit down. On a, a boulder that is set. There's like four or five boulders in a evenly spaced around this campfire. The campfire is very low embers right now. There's no like active flames. She just waits for your your response to that. Can you sneeze? Fuck. Ah, sneeze. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you ruined it. <laughs> um, she uh, she says, "What could she say?" Um, he's kind of he's kind of um like me right now. Um, kind of in some deep thought. Okay. Um, he's not really he's not really sure how to respond. Um, he's not really ready to uh. He's not really ready to just um, open up about that mm -hmm. necessarily. Um, he's a pretty, he's pretty stubborn, um, and he he feels, you know, he feels strong enough to to deal with what he's been experiencing, um, and he he kind of. Inside, he, uh, inside, he kind of welcomes the turmoil that he's in because it reminds him that, uh, uh, somehow, somehow it keeps his, his, uh, friend's memory alive as well. Um, and keeps him from, from forgetting. So, um, you know, at the time, you know, his, uh, so he's, he's kind of some deep thought, although, although bringing up, um, bringing it up invokes some emotion in him, uh, He's not ready to heal from it necessarily, so he's he's kind of unsure how to respond. She uh she notices this, notices this reaction to you, uh that you do, and she goes. You feel that you must be punished. Is that why you will not let yourself heal? If uh. If the nightmares stop, then the memories may fade. 
<laughs> okay. Um, like, you feel like that, uh, your friend would, uh, vanish into nothing more than a memory kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. She goes, uh, she goes, that may be true, but you must remember, blood, it does not necessarily make you family. Family is who you choose to bleed for. Your past will heal in the future. You can remember your past without neglecting the memories. Um, do, do you react, does uh, Rokax react at all to uh, her calling you your original name? Um, no. I mean, I think it's, I think it's somewhat expected, especially because, um, because they don't, I don't think, they don't know him as Rokax right. at all. And that's where I was wondering, is like, do you let her know that you've forsaken that name or you're by some other name or any of that? Uh, no, I, I let it be what it is. Um. No, he wouldn't. I don't think he would. Uh... Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think he would. No. Mm -mm. Okay. That's what. That's what they know him as, and that's how. Yeah. Okay. In the in the rest of the world, he's known as Rokax. Um, does it? Does uh, it's not here. Does Rokax uh, react at all to being called his original name? Does he have like a. a a feeling of like disgust or shame or does he just kind of shrug it off no he I, I think he would just shrug it off because like i like i said i it, he he kind of know knew that as when he came here um that's how they know him and that's how they would be addressing him okay. um so it's not uh and he doesn't he doesn't really want to mix his new life with his old Okay. Um, so he that's he lets it be what it is. Very well. Okay. Um, she's gonna. Uh, you're here to talk about. Uh, what happened with Aldaria? She's gonna be like a week, a week ago, or so. There was a very violent crying out. In the spirits that was extremely nerve rattling and violent, that were immediately silenced. Maybe this is what. Maybe they are related. This could be what you are looking for. But in terms of why or what may have caused it, I do not. No, I just know that the spirits suddenly vanished. And uh, she kind of alludes on to... You, she, you know already that it was obviously not a natural occurrence. Hence why the, the voices just immediately were silenced. Uh, but there isn't any more information that she can lead beyond that. They didn't... The, oh, here we go. Uh... Those souls don't seem to have returned to their natural plane. They are not part of the Earth. So that's what she can gather, is that obviously this was not a natural occurrence, and all those deaths didn't actually return uh, to the energy of the world as it should have. As they should have. Oh, dang. Well, where, where do I go from here? I need to, you know, if something this evil is removing souls from this earth, from this plane completely, it's it's not going to stop with uh, with the one city. I need. Uh, where do I where do I go from here? She could. She looks at you. Uh... Inquisitively, but with a smirk on her face, she's at, she's gonna, she's jabbing at you and be like, 
curious that one that wants wishes to live in solidarity er, solitary wishes to help the multitude of peoples of the world very curious she gets up and she goes back to and starts mixing up some more of her herbs she's uh curious as to if you are going to be taking on or here we, we can just do her voice you choose to take on something of this magnitude alone. It's easier that way. She, she turns around quickly and says, Is it? And, uh, oh, I didn't have the thing on. Is it? Um, she's gonna look at you sternly and be like, Now this may sting, but your past... Do you believe that something similar may happen again? Are you afraid that you may relive your past in your present day? I suppose I believe it's a possibility. Um... Um, she's, she's gonna sit, she's gonna stare at you, thinking, and she goes, she says, I may have something that could help. She goes back to her herbs real quick, and mixes up some more stuff, and, uh, she turns around, she's got this bowl, and it's oddly, has some odd smoke trails coming out of it, which don't seem necessarily natural, since they, she was mixing up herbs, but they're there regardless. And she says, This may help you to understand your path that is before you. But I must warn you, the path ahead is perilous and is extremely dangerous. But I can offer you this tonic that will send you on your vision quest to see what decisions are possibilities in your future. Okay, uh, so, uh, yeah, I suppose Rokax takes it and, does he drink it? Is it a, it's a drink, right? Um, it's a, it's a, it's something you would inhale. Um, inhale uh, she, she, br she brings it over to you, but, uh, you reach your hands up, but as, before you grab the bowl, she pulls it back a little bit and she goes, Many who want to take this quest, do not return the same. And even many, many others succumb to their visions and become but a shell, a, f a husk of their former selves. Or may, in worst case scenarios, cease to exist at all. Are you wait ready to face your demons? She had hands it forward again. Uh... I'm ready. Yeah. Very so, well. yeah, he'll... What you will need, I will be your guide. But you will need an anchor. And she, uh, yells out. Oh, crap. Earthbreaker! And, uh, after a, a moment's pause, her, uh, the, the skin covering the, the cave entrance flies open, and Rokarad walks in. Like, yes, Elder. Oh, wrong thing. Yes, my Elder. Like, would you help? Ugh, God damn it. The different things. <laughs> would you help Lokag? Would you like to be his anchor? He's like, but of course, it would be an honor. And then she asks you, he's like, she asks you, he's like, are you accept accepting of Rokarod to be your anchor? I could, uh, I couldn't choose a better person. You're very well. The success of this depends on the bond between all three members. If any is hesitant of heart, this will not work and could end in disastrous results. 
Now, please take your seats. She goes and sits on uh, the bigger boulder you know, in front of the, the fire pit, uh, Rokorod, and you take positions in uh, a triangle formation on the other sides of the fire itself. Uh, you have a bowl in front of you of the, I don't know, this stuff you have to s inhale. And, uh, <clears throat> and she... The drugs. Sure. And, uh, Sharsa has, uh, stands up and sprinkles some different herbs on top of, on the fire itself. They, they flicker up, they kind of catch fire as, uh, the herbs and stuff are ignited, but it seems to die down. And she says, Now begin the ritual. And so you inhale deeply and you hold it as long as you can. And you're all sitting there, straight up, hands on your thighs, sitting on your, your respective rocks. And uh, nothing seems to happen right away. You're kind of just observing what's going on. And then um, Charsa leans forward a little bit and then directs with motion, uh, or not motion, she makes eye contact with you and then leads her eyes into the fire. As you start, as your eyes gaze to the fire, you start to notice little dancing sprites slowly coming to, to view. After those uh, visions become more and more pronounced, the fire ignites and becomes a... It's not quite a bonfire, but it's quite large in the... The flames are now a very vibrant green. Um, you can hear the flames in your ear as if you were surrounded by flames. Hey, stop. Um, and as this happens, this fl these fires kick up, and then all of a sudden, as fast as they appear, they die back down. The embers are now green. And slowly, you see little animals start to pop out of the flames. And they're dancing around. You start getting a little lightheaded and woozy. Roll a constitution check. Oh. I was sitting here looking for my dice for a second. <laughs> uh, constitution. I roll that in chat. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Oof. I failed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, as that... Uh, with that, you are... Uh, thrown back physically you're knocked back and then uh you you hear an echo in the distance or uh maybe not necessarily an echo but you hear uh Sharsa's voice in the distance is like uh Rokorod pull him back and as you hear that uh you feel yourself maintain composure back and you feel you're pulled back into uh your physical uh paint or plane. You look up and you see Sharsa and she's slowly she's waving. You're obviously on drugs. And she's starting to wave and she's making eye contact with you and she's like, you must stay with us, Lokag. And as she says that, you see coming from the center of her chest a snow owl appear and start flying around the room smoke trails coming off of it it's a beautiful sight and uh you look over to Rokorod and you see a musk oxen come forth from his chest whatever musk oxen sound makes and he starts <laughs> it starts trotting around the fire and then uh you you look down at your chest and roll another constitution check <laughs> Nice. Uh, it's more like it. Yeah, this one, uh, you succeed. Uh, but you notice it feels like your breath is being pulled directly from your sternum. So you <gasps> kind of hold back, feels like your air gets knocked out of you. And out springs forth a snow leopard. These are your spirit animals. You're each assigned one at birth, but you, none of you know what they are unless you undergo a ritual. 
They are assigned by your personality type and the spirits give them to you. And you notice the, the snow owl is flying around you guys and the musossin is grazing on invisible plant life in the tundra. You start to focus on your the uh, the snow leopard, and it is slowly walking around through life. In a couple other uh, animals of the tundra type, you got uh, let's see, you got a an arctic wolf and an ar arctic fox join you, and uh, you're obviously these animal these three animals are cubs and they're they begin playing together in the field or in the field they, they, they begin you know wrestling and playing and frolicking all about being cubby animals or baby animals suddenly a monstrous I don't know what's a big scary animal in the tundra Yeti. Sure. First thing. Or a uh, cave troll. A mountain troll. I, I kind of um, want to make it a shadow. A sh Some uh, sort of a shadow I thing. A monster manual. I actually had all these up and I just forgot. Just Google. Did you? <laughs> Animals in a tundra. I thought I had that written down as a note, but I forgot it. Um... You're looking oh, a polar for, like, bear. Animals. Fuck yeah. Except that doesn't make sense. You're on a mountaintop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. None of these are like big scary animals. Uh, we'll just say a big shadow uh, presence arrives and uh, is a threatening. in a threatening presence. I don't know. The Yeti is pretty threatening. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, sure, we can do a Yeti. We'll say that's what you fought as a kid. How about that? How about it's a shadow image, but you can make it out that it's a Yeti. Yeah, there you go. And it it shows up. And uh, roll a constitution check. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, this one uh, does a, a strike against your psyche. Uh, you take three points of damage. Which we can just keep track of. Um, this obviously was an assault on uh, your mental well-being. As this thing showing up, uh, you're, it feels like you're reliving the events of that day. And then, uh, but you were able to escape the sh shadow yeti's presence. But uh, the Arctic fox uh, falls falls over and slowly fades into nothing. The snow leopard looks like it dro droops its head and it starts walking and it leaves all the other animals that have shown up around uh, the fire and slowly begins to grow up into an older snow leopard. But it just keeps walking in place. Suddenly, some new animals start to appear around the fire. Some animals that don't... Um, normally appear in a, a tundra-like setting. And, uh... You... Then your, uh... The snow leopard... Smoke vision... I don't know what to call it... Begins to split into two. Spirit guide. Sure. Um, it splits into two different versions. One of them... Just keeps walking in place... And it slowly begins to age. And as it begins to age, you can tell that nothing has changed in its life. It is just going on and living life with no real meaning to its life. So you begin, you start to wonder by watching this vision, did the, is that snow leopard actually having a life worth living. Eventually, the snow leopard slowly lays down and falls asleep and doesn't wake anymore. Or it sleeps its last time and slowly just vanishes into nothing. 
You're taking over to the other snow leopard that is taken aback by these other animals that are uh, observing the snow leopard as a strange new animal. But uh, the snow leopard sits down and is kind of confused and not quite understanding what the heck is happening here. And the other animals kind of observe and sniff and try to understand the snow leopard and then begin to, as a group, walk away. The snow leopard continues to sit and uh, they get, the other animals get, I don't know, 10 feet away or something. And then they all stop and they look back at the snow leopard in emotion of like, Aren't you coming? And they wait for the snow leopard to make a movement. Snow leopard doesn't make any mo movement. So each of those animals, one by one, starts coming back and they all sit next to the snow leopard until the snow leopard feels that it can move. Eventually, all the animals start walking forward. And they show signs of uh, getting comfortable with one another. They begin to age and have experiences with one another. Even fights every now and then amongst each other. But you can tell that the snow leopard is experiencing joy for the first time. That the other one doesn't really seem to experience joy. Its tail flickers every now and then. Because it's starting to understand that its life is a little more full with these friends around. Um, roll a constitution check. Ouch. Okay. <laughs> oh, sucks. no. Th th these are some potent drugs, my dude. <laughs> yeah, man. What did she give me? Um, give me the extra dose of ayahuasca. Yep. Um... Uh, you, uh, suddenly your body begins to shake. Um, you don't know if it's because the visions that you're seeing or the effects of any of the herbs that were in there, but the, the mus muskox perks up and comes and runs through your chest and knocks you back for about 15 seconds and you, you hear... Hold on, brother. And, uh, Rokorod speaks into your mind. He's trying to bring you back. Because there's shadow... You've started to notice there's shadows around the area starting are starting to creep in. And they're beginning to try to take over your soul. And at least it feels like that pieces of you are trying to be ripped out. Something is trying to consume your spirit in this form of a, the snow leopard. The shadows begin to form in the another shadow, but it's a much bigger shadow, and it doesn't take on the form of a yeti. But you are not alone in this one. Those other animals that you have seen, there's a snake, there's a spider, there's a badger, there's a hawk. There's five other animals here, and you feel the, the anxiety of what you felt when you were younger fighting that yeti and your friend dying you feel that anxiety hit again but you're like i need to i need to conquer this fear and i need to conquer this enemy and as you take a step forward you feel the presence of these five other animals stand beside you you're not alone in this fight and as this shadow monster comes and sweeps down i have to avoid the mic here sweeps down and tries to consume your soul the other animals are actually in an active attack formation with you. And it begins after a tumultuous period. Roll another constitution save. Alright. Uh, after a tumultuous period, uh, you are starting... You're actually physically feeling exhausted just from watching this occur in front of you. But the shadow monster begins to dissipate and fade. The rest of the shadows around the cave 
walls begin to fade and you slowly begin to come out of your vision. And Sharsa, once she realizes that you are safe and have re returned to your physical self, she comes up to you and she gives you, she hands you uh, a gourd that looks like there, there's a fluid in there. You don't, you're not sure what is in it, but you are extremely parched of thirst. She says, drink. Yes, you still hear, you still hear echoes because uh, the drugs are still affecting your sensors, your, your sensory whatevers. That's right. I'm going to drink it and then guzzle it down. All right. She's like, easy, easy. Yeah, you don't want to get sick. There, easy, easy. And then uh, you feel a big heavy hand come, like, try to stabilize you because you're a little woozy. Like, got you. I got you, brother. You're not. We got you. And he stabilizes, or Rocker Rod stabilizes you as you begin to come out. Your Your pupils begin to undilate is that the word i don't know normalize i don't know and you as you and you come to and sharsa looks <laughs> she's very close to you she has her hands on your face again and she's looking at you to see or she's looking deep into your eyes with slight look of worry but more of a questioning to see what effect this had happened on you she wants to know is if uh, the assault on your psyche was too great that you are no longer who you are, or if uh, anything had happened to you. And she goes, Are you there, my son? Can you hear me? I'm, I'm here. here. She, the echoes slowly start to fade out. Um, she goes, She looks at you for a little bit, a while longer. Just to make sure that you are stable. And then she looks at you and says, What did you see? What did you feel? Uh, I, uh, I saw that I need, I need help if I'm going to, I need, uh, you know, I need, I need help from those that, uh, have experienced this as well. She kind of thinks to herself, because she obviously knows what you, she was a guide. She knows what you were experiencing. Right. Um, but she just wants to know what you interpreted out of it. And she says, uh, she, she kind of, she feels happy for you. She knows that it's going to be difficult. But she also says, Your redemption lies with your new companions. Seek them out, and you will know peace. And all of a sudden, the fire goes <laughs> and returns back to normal, and the, the cave seems to lighten back up. Even though the fire died down, the cave lightened up because the rest of the shadows have disappeared. And uh, all your senses are about you now. Oop. Okay. Um. Some heavy shit, man. Can <laughs> you say that to her? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, that was, uh, that was that was cool. That out outside of character, that was, that was a really cool, uh, really cool little vision quest, little trip there. Oh, I'm glad. Um, I was nervous. <laughs> no, um, so yeah, I'll, you know, I feel good. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, Sharsa. I, uh, I feel like I have, um, I feel like I know what I need to do, um, at least to get started. Um, and 
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so she she comes over to you or after she lowers her hands from you and she puts them on your waist and uh she grabs your hand in her in hers in, in your unifying sign of like we're we're together in this and she which is generally your greeting sign of someone that a sign of respect or something like that and she does that for you but then afterwards she actually gives you a hug and pulls you in close because she knows this is going to be difficult for you and she, she knows that this means that they may not see you again but she she knows that it's going to bring you peace and that's what she ex she wants she uh as she pulls herself away from you a little bit you can see that her eyes are starting to gleam up a little bit and she says hmm, how is she going to say this she says uh so Rokax has been born then, huh? Uh, Rokax is obviously a, a little bit confused that she knows his new name. She kind of chuckles to herself. <laughs> oh, that was a horrible laugh. Let's redo that. <laughs> it's like, those who commune in, or how would we say it? Those who partake partake in the triunion know more about each other afterwards than those they normally would before. And as someone who is your elder, I was able to divulge a little more information. And uh, you, you didn't. She walks over her to her table of herbs a little bit, and she says, "You were worried that the memory." Would fade if you if the nightmares disappeared, correct? Yes. She kind of she smiles to herself and she says, "I find it comforting that you honor Zakor with your name." Zakor being the reverse of Rokax. Da da. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's you you decided cool. to uh, honor his memory by taking on the reverse of his name as your own. And she realized yeah. that from this triunion. Uh, she was able to gather that, and she says, I believe he would be honored. Uh, I think at this point, Rokax... Uh, you know, with uh, with somebody else knowing that, he definitely breaks down into a blubbering baby. He starts bawling, <laughs> for sure. Hey, I, you need to RP yeah. that. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, uh, so, um, Rokarod comes up, and uh, he kind of picks you up a little bit. He dusts off a... Uh, you're, did you take all your gear off? Like, are you just wearing like your tunic and stuff now, or do you have like shoulder uh, I don't pads think on? I, no, I think I, I don't think I had enough time to um, de-armor myself. I did consider okay. that that, but I, I think I'm still wearing my armor. You just dropped like your pack and stuff. Yeah, my okay. pack and my my shield and my weapons, and you know, got as comfortable like as I could be without removing my armor. Gotcha. Well, uh, he kind of. Shakes you up and stabilizes you and dusts off uh, your shoulder pads. And he says, It's okay, brother. And he, he pats you. And he grabs you up and he lifts you up from the ground. And he said, um, He's just there. And he looks at you. Makes eye contact with you. Just And doesn't need to say anything, but he just wants you to know that it's like, It's okay. I see you. I hear you. You're safe. It's like, and, okay. and he just wants to convey that, like, you know what? It's like, you are always welcome. You are my brother, regardless what anyone else says. <laughs> what, what was his name? Swiftfoot? Swiftfeet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh... Yeah, Swiftfoot. Yeah. Dorag. All right. Swift feet can go. Hmm. Go chase snow. 
snow rabbit apples for all I care. You are always welcome <laughs> in this tribe. And it is an honor to see what you have become. He lifts you up. Okay. Um, um go ahead. No, is that that's uh is that all you got? Uh, no, if you had something else, I don't want to interrupt you. No, we uh, uh you mean like what I got right now or in general, like for like end of stream? No, as in the encounter with uh hmm. Sharsa. Are we walking out? Yeah, um she uh he, um, Rockerod kind of, as he picks you up, he leads you out forward, and Sharsa, uh, she has, she doesn't turn around, but her back is towards you, and she kind of just waves as you, uh, exit the cave entrance. And you go, and, uh, after you, you feel the, the cold air, you know, beat into your lungs again, you take a big, deep breath, and just take it all in, and you kind of feel like you have a a new lease on life. You feel a vigor inside your soul that you haven't felt in many, many years. Rokarad re realizes this and he says, Come. I must, I have something for you. And uh, he kind of, okay. he leads you forward. And uh, as you make about 20 feet down the, I don't know, the mountain face, uh, Char Charlotte comes back out and says, like, Hold on! Two, hold on. Just, just a minute. And she come, kind of, with her cane, comes back down. Says, "I have something for you." And she hands you a sack. And uh, what's inside of it is these uh, very interesting pearlescent silver. Looks like kind of teardrop-shaped beads. And she says, "These may come in handy." Sick. Now take care, and feel free to stay in touch. Come have dinner with us again sometime. She makes her way back up the mountain. Thank you, Sharsa. So, but she didn't tell me what the beads were. Uh, no. Do you ask her? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, what are beads. what are? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I had it. I had it. Um, no, I just ruined the immersion. Whatever <laughs> she says. Uh, she does the. She's facing the wrong other way, and she waves again. She says, All will be revealed in good time. But there are five beads in there. Five beads. A small sack? Mm -hmm. a little it looks like a little okay. coin sack. Made, All right. made of Just animal hide. A little thing that goes on my... Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, but, All right. Uh, so, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, uh, Rokarod, um, he, he nods. And uh, he continues walking forward. Um, cool. I'll, I'll follow. I'll follow him back. Um, what what time is it? It's pretty early in the morning, right? I mean, I got an early start. Um, no. Well, because it took like a half day's travel just to get there from the morning. Gotcha. Um, so it's probably okay. running around like four p.m. Maybe six. Okay. Um, so I feel like you know. As you know, with the tribal, um, you know, kind of, you know, just I feel like uh, I need to give Sharsa something back to, uh, I need to give something back to her. So I feel like uh, uh, Rokax would go, he would go hunt to bring, bring back some, some meat for her. Okay. Um, bring back something for her. Cool. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, yeah. I, I don't we don't we don't have to play that out but that is that is something he would do before he left okay so uh we'll rp it as uh we won't we won't go through it all but essentially uh but before uh Rockerod says hey follow i have something for you he says um he essentially says so what are your or so what are your plans for the rest of the evening and you essentially say hey you want to go uh as a thanks yeah. or whatever, you're gonna go hunt some stuff, and he's like, "That sounds like a great plan. It gives me time to set up and stuff and prepare an evening meal uh, for you and uh, the family. So I will convene with you again in the town center uh, once you return." All right, 
perfect. Okay. Um, so all that goes down. Um, it's about early evening, six, seven p.m. You give Sharsa. Uh, you she she's uh obviously in a meditative state. She's chanting and she has a uh, smoke um all around her, and uh, you don't want to interrupt her. Uh, but yeah, you go ahead and leave uh the tribute to her outside the cave, and you know that sh she'll be aware of where they're from. Uh, you make your way back down to the town center, and uh, Rokarod is... He's there, and he's hes tending to uh, some of the, the younger Goliath children. He, they, they like climbing on him, because he's a big guy. And uh, he, he's just playing with them. He's playing a little uh, Goliath game of some rocks, you know, and some sticks, and just kind of reading. Because uh, <clears throat> what? Because what do guys have to play with is other than rocks and sticks, well, right? Well, it's in the tundra. It's just snow everywhere. There's not much, right? There's not just much. Got rocks and sticks. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're playing rocks. But, you know, and the kids, well, they're they're Goliaths, too, so they're like, they have sticks, and they're pretending <clears throat> to be warriors. They're fighting each other or whatever, and he's the big, bad, scary monster, and, is, and he's just playing with them. like, oh, here I am coming to get you. Oh, you'll never escape me! Ah! And he's chasing him. He's like, ah! like, all the kids screaming and having fun, and um, all of a sudden, uh, you, you hear a couple of the parents saying, "You know, it's time to come inside. Let let um Rockerod uh get to his family and get to sleep." And he kind of chuckles, like, <laughs> "It's no big deal." But you, you kids, you know, you better listen to your family, your parents. Run along now, run along. And then he kind of sees uh, you coming up in the distance. He goes, um, oh, what did he say? Uh, ah, uh, Lokag, uh, excuse me, uh, Rokax, come, let us share an evening meal. And uh, he leads you into the tent. And uh, he's got uh, some fresh meats there across a big open fire. And uh, you're able to partake in a meal. Now, this I'm going to leave up to you as a player. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can RP any sort of conversations you have with him if you want. But I'll leave that up to you. Uh, nah, nah, I don't think we need to. Okay. I think, uh, you know, uh, Rokax has, uh, I mean... He's he's just come off of a pretty emotional, um, intense trip with, uh, you know, kind of shook him to his core. Hunted, yeah, hunted afterwards. He doesn't have a lot to say right now. Uh, he's he's mostly here to en enjoy the enjoy the company and but doesn't have a lot to say really. That's fine. We'll say uh, Rokarod totally picks up on that. You know, he had a long day too. Um, I, you guys kind of just sit in quiet uh, contemplation with each other like oh, old friends. You don't need to feel the silence with just talking. Um, he loads up a a pipe of a, some Goliath tobacco. I don't know. And uh, after you guys finish your meal and uh, have some, I don't know, Goliath wine. I'm very creative. <laughs> uh, Goliath just, wine, just, Goliath tobacco. Yeah, just, just to try to Calm your nerves. He he knows that that can be a very... And it was taxing on him, too, you know, to try to pull you back into sanity. And so uh, you're just kind of relaxing for the night, smoke some of this tobacco and... Uh, some of that good herb. Yeah, there you go. And then... Uh, kind buds. <laughs> and uh, he... Uh, yeah, th that's what happens. And uh, you guys crash out for the night, and he's like... Yeah, be sure to get a good night's sleep. This will help you sleep. Uh, we got an early morning ahead of us. Hey, thanks for the good vibes. Oops, thanks for the good vibes. Those actually has an <laughs> that has a really cool overlay when we're not playing D and D. Uh, you haven't seen it yet. Oh, really? Yeah, I I took the good vibes sound from um. Oh crap! Good vibes. That one. Oh that yeah, song? from uh, Revolution. Thank you, Revolution. Yeah, and uh, it has like a cool good vibes graphic that's is behind like the webcam and it slides across the screen it's pretty cool nice yeah th those are pretty new anyways that's besides the point um but you uh sleep as you fall asleep um and you're looking into the fire you see uh 
obviously it's you're in between sleep and awakeness but as you look into the fire you see a snow leopard sitting and it's staring back at you and that's when your eyelids slowly begin to shut and you sleep some of the soundest sleep that you've had and as long as you can remember you don't toss or turn you don't wake up in the middle of the night you don't have any cold sweats what wakes you up is Rokhag or Rokarod shaking you awake he's like hey wake up sleepyhead you're sleeping in and it's like you're normally you're like up at four or six in the morning it's like good nine or ten in the morning he's like sleep well Ah, uh, first, first time in a long time, Earthbreaker. He, he chuckles to himself. He's like, and puts his hand on his hips. He's like, oh, ha, ha, ha. great to hear it. Here, get your stuff together. You have long days ahead of you. Because he knows that you're not here for long. He, he loves having you here, but he knows that you have obligations. Yeah. So he's gonna respect that. Yeah. But he goes, but before you leave, I have something to give you. He's like, come with me. And he leads you. You go about a 15-minute walk. You kind of chat about your childhood and goofy things that you guys did all growing up. You know, traversing a cliffside and trying to catch fish out of a frozen lake with uh, your bare hands. And how uh, Gorath lost a toe because he got frostbite. And you guys kind of chuckle with that. And... uh. You guys, you keep going forward, and you start going down the mountain, and it starts getting into more plains. It's getting a little warmer. There's a lot less snow. And he goes, we're nearly there. And he points over, so. and there, there's a lone tree in the distance. It's a bigger tree. And it's interesting because you're high up in the mountains, and it's like a... It's not an evergreen, but it has leaves. You recognize it as... This is uh, the place that your people go to to honor the dead that have uh, died in battle. Um, and it's a memorial area, and it's it's sacred to your people because this tree doesn't seem to actually drop its leaves. It's green all year round, like a big oak tree. He's a, in a... He walks over. You're, you're kind of... Uh, you're not overcome with emotion, but... Uh, since this was so pertinent to your childhood and upbringing, this is a sacred place. You you kind of feel a sense of awe just being here, and you haven't seen it in a long time, and you're just kind of taking it all in. He keeps, uh, Rokarod keeps walking forward, and he goes on the other side of the, the tree. And uh, do you follow him, or do you wait for him to come back? Uh... Did it seem like he wanted me to follow him? Uh, it didn't matter to him either way. It's like, you you can follow him. Um, he didn't say you had to, but he also was just like, we're just walking here. He, he knows that you're observing the area and taking it in. You haven't sure. been here for years. I think uh, Rokak said, just hang, hang tight. Okay. Uh, after uh, a couple minutes notice, Rokarod comes back around the corner. And he's donning a shield. And uh, he goes, Found it. And he walks up to you. You're about 20 feet away. And he goes, Ah, oh, crap. What was the name of his... Czar? What's your name backwards? Rokax. Zakor? Zakor, yeah. Zakor, he's like... Yeah. Um, I believe Zakor would be... Would want you to have this. And he gives you this shield which was your friend's shield. Oh, uh... Rokorod, I can't... I can't take this. You've, you've done enough for me. Please, this is... This is, a uh, This is an heirloom of your family's. He, he's... He stopped you before you finished that sentence. He's like, Nonsense. You two were very close. And I know that he would want you to have it. Here. Any... Any... He forcefully, like, sh it's on, he's holding it. It's not wrapped around his arm, but he shoves it, like, into your chest. It's like, like, this is yours. This is yours. God. 
Uh, thank you, Earthbreaker. I'll, uh, I'll wear it well. May it bring you fortune and defend you well. Thank you. Nice. Cool shit. <laughs> so, uh, essentially... Um, he said he he didn't say that out loud. By the way, yeah. he's just thinking for cool shit. <laughs> nice. Um, but he, uh, Rokra kind of looks at you and he looks down and you, you kind of don it to see how it fits. And as you, you as you said thanks to him and he, a big a heartful smile comes across his face like he he misses his brother, but he's proud to see that. His brother's shield can protect someone that he cares about. He knows it'll come in handy. He says, It looks good on you. It, should, it will serve you well. Thank you. And then he's. Brokax is gonna bow to him. <laughs> yeah. He, he, play, he pats you on the shoulder a couple times. He's like, <laughs> No need for such formality but you have quite the day's journey ahead of you I should let you get to it is there anything was, uh, else you need for me before you go I think I have everything I need and and then some thanks to you um, I'll be on my way and uh, I will see you again I'd be happy to have it yes please come share dinner with us again sometime it's always an honor to see you Farewell, my friend. And, uh, we need to think of some kind of cool, like, goodbye thing for your your tribe or something to say goodbye. All right, here, you take your guys' wrists and you backwards and you pop, pop. How about that? Cool. And you boom. It's, it's a show of strength. Because, you know, you're not trying to hurt each other or be like, I'm going to flex out my muscles, but it's boom. And it's just kind of solid. It's like a solidarity thing. Boom. Something you did as kids. You guys made cool. it. It's like your secret handshake. And uh, he smiles at that. Cause he's like, and nods because he's like, he's happy that you remembered. And it just, and you're kind of surprised because it just came naturally. You didn't even think. It's like, wow, I'm, my body just responded. And then you, you, you're starting to feel like a little, a little more whole than you have. And he says, farewell, my friend. Safe journey, and we'll see you in the future. And he's saying this as he's walking away, so he's slowly he slowly fades out. It's like, take care, and we'll see you. Blah. I don't know, but uh, he, he, he's walking. <laughs> he's walking back, and uh, now you are standing there by the sacred tree with this brand new shield. And uh, yeah, that's that's where you're at. Yeah, right on. Um, so is, uh, what's, what's the deal with the shield? Um, that is your sentinel, that, that is a sentinel shield. That's a sentinel shield? Mm -hmm. That's the uncommon, Sweet. right? Yeah, it is. Cool. I'll have to look it up again. That's awesome. Is there any way I can get it put into, into here, is that? Uh, or... yeah, actually, in, uh, Fantasy Grounds? Yeah. yeah. Um, so in your items, uh, actually, you know what? I might have to drag that in because I'm the DM. Oh crap! All I can't right. move this. Oops. I'll let you. I'll let you do that then. Um, let's see. Can I search for that? Not story items. Um, but yeah. So that's the majority of what, or that's pretty much all I had. Um, for your story for where. You were gone to what happened, and you. I'm assuming you're on your way back to the little town that everyone's at. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna head back to where he came from, and he's hoping that um, they hadn't left yet. So. Okay. Um, or that he would be able to find them again, but he has a he has a good feeling he'll be able to find them because uh, seeing as they're destinies sort of seem to be entangled mm -hmm. so um so right now just for character knowledge you don't know that the shield is any different you don't you don't i don't you, you don't get your plus two or you don't get anything special benefits of it yet 
Um, right now, it's just a, a special heirloom and a memorable thing that you have carrying. Okay. For now. Uh, yeah, nothing okay. nothing special or interesting about this shield. Just, you know, it's your friend's shield. And I got I got and uh got to get my bag of anal beads on there too. Yeah. <laughs> Can't forget those. All right, hold on. I can uh I can at least add this to your inventory. Let's see. Uh, inventory. Let's drag. Ooh, drag this over. Boom. Oh, it shows you have. That was that was cool. I I dig it. I like the uh. I you like, like it. that? It was fun. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Cool. That <laughs> that makes me happy to hear because I was very heckin' nervous. I thought about having some sort of a combat happen there, but we were already like an hour and a half in, and I didn't want to get stuck doing a weird combat or something. But essentially, the idea yeah. was I was going to have you do some sort of combat where you actually learned the maneuvers for your, your class. So imagine oh, that we yeah. did that when all that stuff was happening that, uh, you you learned these maneuvers in your spirit realm or whatever. That'd have been that'd have been cool to play out, but that's all right. That's cool. Yeah. I was I was thinking it would have been pretty cool to actually actually fight that shadow yeti or whatever. You know mm -hmm. that would have. But it's 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 all good. It's well, I it I think that would I would have got I would have got burnt out going out that that long. I kind of thought that too, and on top of that too, fucking. Uh, combats one on one can be very dangerous. You know, like yeah, you're you're three bad rolls away from actually dying. And then yeah. I had the RP is like, okay, well, you just got knocked the fuck out because you were in spirit land or something crazy. Yeah, but that's the thing is, you can you're you're the DM. You can you can make up whatever you want, man. You can you can Excuse you can me. force the battle to go exactly how you want it to go because in reality, the numbers don't fucking matter. <laughs> Not as a DM. That's, that's true. <laughs> but you, can, but again, you know how many times you know how many times I've rolled and been like, oh shit, if they hit them, they're gonna die. Oh, they missed. <laughs> yeah, but you also need to realize that, like, if you guys know that I'm pulling punches, you're not going to be scared of anything, right? Yeah, yeah but there's, like you the know, there's, there's, there's they time. They fucked you up. <laughs> but there's, the thing is, is there's, you never really, the the player can suspect, but they, they never really know, um if you're pulling punches or not. And, you know, you can have somebody die and still weave it into oh that was that was supposed to happen right. you know what i mean yeah yeah so but uh yeah I, I was more worried about like well it's gonna get late i don't know how long this is yeah. gonna go i don't want to set something up but uh, so we did uh yeah. we kind of did a, a weird skill challenge there with your constitution saves and made it more of a something was fucking up your psyche and, no, that's that's super cool. I, I, that was really fun. Yeah, and a Yeti is challenge rating three, so I think that would that would fuck me yeah, up. Yeah, that too. would. Well, that owl bear was challenge rating three. <laughs> you had your party with yeah, you. Yeah, that, <laughs> that had five of us. Yeah, yeah. four or five of us. It, uh, I I I had to look it up, but essentially, uh, a character's level, um, or an an enemy is or a character is about a fourth the strength. Of something of an equal level so like a level one a level one creature is as about as strong as a level four solo player right yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense so this would be like you'd be have to have to be level 12 to take on wait what it, it's ish you know eventually like uh at higher levels, you get more skills, more abilities, and stuff like that. So, like, a level four, you could probably take on as, a, like, a level nine pretty easily. Yeah, okay. But, um... Abominable Yetis are challenge rating nine. <laughs> yeah, there's some nasty stuff in there. All right, um, so Rokax is making his way back. Uh, I forgot the name of... The Yalish? Was that the name of the city? I don't remember. Um... But uh I don't remember the name of that city. Coming uh next week, hopefully you can make it with the team and uh they can fill you in with what's happened and we'll rope you back in. Uh 
Cool. Did they important. ever? Did they ever meet the? Uh, did they ever meet that uh, merchant? Did they, they get a hold of him? And that was stupid fun. Was it? Yeah. yeah I'm kind of bummed I missed all of that, but yep. it's all good. This was this was fun. Yep. Yeah. Um, hey. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's uh. So this came up um. Uh, yesterday when we played, Serial just reminded us. Uh, Echo writes because uh, her memory, she can't trust her memory. Everything that happens to her, she writes down in her journal, right? Serial oh, had the great neat. idea yesterday. Be like, yo, whatever has happened, you wrote it down. When Rokax comes back, just let him read your journal. So that'll be a way to somewhat catch you up. If you want to read it, yeah, they, can right always, they can always explain stuff to you as well, like an actual person. But if you're curious, you can essentially say, I'm fully caught up because of this journal and what I gathered from my friends. So sure. if you wanted, you could watch those VODs and stuff. They're on YouTube. If I were going to recommend anything, turn them on at like 1.5 speed because that's a lot of hours to get through. And uh, yeah. they've, they've made it so it doesn't tweak voices anymore. Your voices are just faster. So, oh, okay. They don't get all squeaky and buggy buggy. Whatever. Interesting. But uh, don't talk yeah, about I'll give, it, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, we've had some crazy fun stuff happen in the last couple of weeks. I'm, uh, I'm excited to have you back with the team and uh, what is coming I up. Will, yeah, I will probably... Next weekend, I'll have to miss as well, unfortunately. Um, next but weekend, I should be. I. Yes, next Saturday I will not be available. I've had something I've had something planned for um, several months now okay. um, for that weekend, um, and it'll be an all-day thing. I'm getting a new, actually, Dad's getting me uh, a new custom seat, custom built seat for my for my bike. Nice. Um, and what they do is we we go over we go over across the water, and the guy builds it basically to my to me. Oh um, yeah, like dad's ass. bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Rock on. So he's getting he's getting me one of those. So I I have to be there all day because they'll they'll cut it, they'll have me sit on it, they'll have me get off, and they'll tweak it again. Right. Um. So. Um. Yeah. So I have to I'll have to be gone after that. But then um after that I should be I should be good. The baby will be old enough that I can take these this hour, or, cool. or these hours away, and I should be good after that. So. Okay. Um, but, well, if you do come back, Rokax is just, well, go ahead. I was just going to say Rokax has just got a long trek. Yeah, back. I was going to just say, yeah. it's like, it's, it makes sense. You got to travel back. So if you're not there, it makes sense. But if you do get done with whatever you're doing on Saturday early and we're barely started, you know, just ping us in chat and say, yo, I'm here and we'll just get you sure. in. Um, sure, but, I'm, sure. but I'm excited for what's up ahead. Something I've been planning for a few weeks now, so hopefully it goes cool, well. Cool. But, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Um, you have anything for me? Questions for me? Anything? No, no, I think we're good. It was fun. Rock on. Um, I will probably end stream here then because it's 11:15 my time, and uh, all right, man. I need to eat and stuff, but that was fun. I hope you had fun. And, uh, yeah, definitely. Was, uh, interesting little bit there but i'm excited uh those skill checks or skill challenges and stuff those are going to be uh something you guys are going to do as a party sometimes too instead of just you know hardcore encounters or whatever all the time so keep things fresh nice. keep things new um anyways my dude um i guess i will catch you a couple weeks from now yep at the very least i'll yep i'll be back then rock on all right see ya latest all right, let me switch. Dragon. Fuck on. All right, I'm going to close this. I don't need this anymore. All right, my friends. That was a one-on-one -on -one with Rokax in Trindom. I hope you guys uh had fun and enjoyed it. I had fun. Uh, got a little nervous there and how to... Uh, playing one-on-one -on -one is always interesting, especially like because uh, we avoided combat. But like I said, combat can go very badly. When it's just one on one, like even a level one against a quarter level zombie, that zombie is actually a very real threat. You know, just one zombie is now a threat, as opposed to when you have five people, it's like, okay, seven zombies, yeah, we can get through it. 
but one zombie becomes a very real threat but which is kind of cool at the same time because since that zombie is now a very real threat you can actually go deeper in the exposition and detail of expl uh, of that zombie itself like all right this one zombie is terrorizing this house but or this little town that's scary now when you got a party it's like ah fodder let's get them anyways uh, i'm glad you had fun cereal um i'm excited for uh next week uh depending on uh what happens it sounds like uh we'll be uh doing some we, we had some stuff planned for the actual the full team anyway as to uh what's gonna be coming forward with uh gisella and gax and all that stuff too so we'll continue moving forward hey pop our butt pads get them get them oh 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 hi Jada. hi hi how are you Oh, Mama's going to get a toy. Titanga for the butt pats. Um, all right, my friends. I I do need to end here, but uh, I do hope you guys tune in for uh, the Dark Souls Three charity stream tomorrow. Uh, like I said, um, actually, you know what? Here, here's a here's a link. You can see the rewards, the milestones, um, all the goofy stuff you can do. Um, those are. It's not working. Why didn't it work? Did you guys see that? Please hold. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> that, I knew there was something that I didn't have up yet. And it's my boss. Or, my boss. My bot. I didn't have my bot started this entire time. So, uh... Hey, watch out, Dougie. Watch out, Dougie. Oh, dude, yeah. Hopefully your internet is fixed. Because uh, you haven't streamed in quite a while because of it where is it all right we'll get the the chat bot up so you guys can see the charity thing but it, it should be fun and be interesting i am teaming up with a uh, team spellbound if you don't know them um it was created by uh red witchery uh that's harley on on twitch she's hilarious um very kind-hearted person and um there and uh, i'm joining up with them to uh, contribute any funds that come oops i can't spell um there you go there's the there's the link that's uh for my contribution to the charity um i also will be donating any bits i receive personally or any subs that happen during the event i will be donating uh those funds to the charity as well and that's going to happen once we roll over to the trevor project uh, which will be the second week of june um, but go check it out there's some goofy rewards in there um, the other rewards that actually modify the game, that'll be over here on Twitch. Uh, that'll be like a little overlay, an extension, which I can't have up now because I'm not playing the game, so it doesn't show up properly. Um, but I hope you guys tune in for that. If at, I mean, you know, obviously, if just showing up is cool and because uh, funds are tight for everyone. But I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are too. Um, but I'm going to sign off here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys had fun. If you liked it, remember to like, subscribe, comment. It helps me out a lot. Let's me know what you're liking and what you're not liking. But more importantly, remember to spay and neuter your pets, adopt and shop, donate to a rescue if you can afford it, or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering. That is a very rewarding experience and helps those animals and rescues out that are very much in need. Um, I may pitch the idea to uh, the other members of Quarantine to see if uh, they would like to do some one-on-ones at some point too. Like, you know, life comes at us all crazy. So if someone needs to take a week off or something, maybe we could do that too. Um... If they don't miss any weeks, they could always be like, yo, I want to do a little one-on-one -on -one of uh, maybe my backstory or something. So if people want to do that, maybe that's something we can do as well. But uh, I'm going to sign out. Thank you guys so much for tuning with me, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> Come on, let's go upstairs and go party.